Hey guys, news from our new overlords, which are <laughs> Opera <laughs> and therefore just a few uh, key features. So if you like to see what's actually happening or will be happening in the future, what kind of roadmap they are having. So hey, you can check this out. So click on the link. Of course, everything will be linked in there. A few things which are kind of interesting, I guess, for us users will be two things which are coming out. So this is in beta, but it's already available. If you like to check out the beta, that will come. It's Curve Library. Well, in my opinion, not so important, but the nine slice. Ooh, I like that. So what is nine slice? Hey, I give you just one thing. Let's say you have come on, come on, a menu like this, but you want to scale it. Oh, okay, this doesn't look too good. And therefore, you slice it into nine pieces and then you can dynamically stretch it out. So basically what you're seeing here on the screen, you can tilt it, you can stretch and then inside everything will stay. For example, the corners and all that stuff will stay relative, which is a great way. So here, that's why it's called nine slice. Pretty cool stuff. I like it because you can use it for menus, for pop-ups, for, for let's say dialogue pop-ups or text pop-up or whatever. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. So this is a standard in a lot of other engines. We are late as usual, but hey, that is good. No, that's not what I wanted to show. So here, one of the few things. So first of all, if you just want to see those two new features, so the nine slice or the curve library, why not? The other stuff is, I guess, it's okay. Reduced installer size. I guess they want to uh, rebuild the engine a little bit, and this is going to be shown in the Q2, uh, Q3 and Q4 uh, parts. But for example, which I guess is more uh, interesting for you uh, users is, let's say there will be a Zoom call from a few of the hosts, show who they are, and they um, are well being there. And then for example, you can follow up that if you like, because then you have a Q&A and just check out or even ask questions to those guys concerning the future. So hopefully, come on, give me my particle emitter inside Game Maker. That would be my dream come true. So that this stuff is actually looking good in the future. Then a few things which is going to make me totally unemployed as it seems in this regard. There will be up to date feature tutorial videos which they are working uh, currently working on. So basically all the guys which are making uh, well uh, videos for <laughs> Game Maker Studio. Bye bye. As it seems, no, I'm just kidding. I don't know. But why not if they are doing their own stuff? Because let's face it, their stuff was good, but wasn't too good. And therefore, there were more semi professional guys like us just taking that space over, which is kind of strange. But hey, that's the way it goes. And of course, here they will uh, have their own new videos in this regard. So, one thing, for example, which is coming is Curve Library. So what is that stuff? Kind of easy. So you have your animation curves, yay. And then you had, while well, you're having right now, three options in Game Maker Studio. You can have it linear, you can have smooth. And then recently they put in Mr. Bezier. <laughs> so basically you can tilt it a little bit more so you can have you have more flexibilities and here they just want to have some presets so you can i guess you you have some window or whatever then there will be some presets so you just click on that and then boom they are finished and therefore you have some standard default animation curves hmm. why not then another thing which is kind of interesting interesting so let's go into the roadmap so if you just click on here of course you can watch the other roadmaps so this is what they did 2018, 2019, did they do did everything? Yeah, they did. And here, kind of interesting, they will do refactoring. Every refraction means they will uh, revisit code and basically remodel the whole engine uh, from the inside. Why is that? Well, because they are replacing the old OpenTK into SDL2 and if this doesn't ring anything to you or so it doesn't ring any bell to you no worries because this is some technic technical stuff so basically these two are cross-platform development libraries which are just giving you low access to audio inputs or for example inputs of your hardware and of course 
input from your graphics hardware via OpenGL. So this is, I guess, uh, more well dominant standard. So SDL2 is being used in Steam, the Steam client, and of course all the Steam games. And in Linux and Mac, this stuff uh, is, is an absolute standard. So here, this, I guess, they will go into a more modern or uh, let's say a more popular or more used, I don't know what you want to call that, um, the library format, and then they will kick this one out and just replacing. Therefore, they will have to do lots of bug fixing because once you replace one library with the other one, imagine that they are that this, is, that this is not going as smoothly as you expect. There will be always some bug fixing because you're changing from one um, library to the other one. The same is, for example, Metal for runtime. I thought like, hey, that is a typo, but it's not. Metal is a um, graphics API that will require all Apple devices to use in the near future. So basically, I guess uh, Metal um, is their new kind of a library just for the Apple products. I guess they want to unify it into one system because I've seen that they want to use one system for their um, cell phones in, in the Apple sphere, of course, their cell phones, their tablets, and their laptops or PC, uh, their their PCs. Therefore, they, they just want to have, uh, well, let's say, one system for all. Therefore, I guess they are moving to this kind of standard. Here you go. And of course, well, consideration that just means, hey, uh, we will try to make everything better. A nice filler word for something, something or nothing. Who knows? But it sounds good. And of course, there will be some extensions, updates. Come on, give me my particles. And well, the other stuff, I guess, isn't too important. So this hopefully will be a good thing because it says this will be used to render the IDE. So basically Game Maker Studio as such. Not sure if it will be used for rendering, for example, the output, so the game itself. I guess it's just for the IDE. How? It handles, for example, like stretching and all that stuff. And of course, there will be an asset inspector. So basically a fallout <laughs> for you can peek inside in some stuff without opening some editors. So basically, what, what does that actually mean? Uh, so if you played fallout, this is not completely the same. This is not the same at all. Let's say you have something, an object. Let's go to this little wizard guy and then and then of course here you can and then you got all that stuff and as you can see these are editors and maybe they will change something in the flow how you can interact and the last thing and i'm completely not sure what they mean by that workflow improvements so basically optional ways how to work with the with your projects that does not use the workspaces or chains not sure what that means. Hopefully that was some interesting stuff for you guys. See you around and bye bye.